G'day guys, in today's video, I'm showing you how I use the Koros Training Hub to plan for my next sub 40 10K attempt. But let me know down in the comments what you're actually here for. If you're here for the 10K training plan, or if you're here for the Koros tutorial, I'm just interested to find out why. Anyway, I've got my literature that I'm using to help inform this plan. Let's get stuck into it. So before I get into the details of the plan, I wanna talk about three things that sit behind it and sort of will explain a few of the reasons why I've made some of the decisions that I've made in this plan. If you don't care about that, I'll put a timestamp down below, skip ahead to that, so you can just go straight to the core off stuff if that's what you're here for. Some key components for this training plan. First one is I'm specifically addressing recent failures with 10K races. I've died in the back half of every race that I've done. And so I'm working on speed endurance. The second key point is that this is based around training plans that have worked for me in the past. My most successful training plan was back in 2019. That was when I ran a 39, whatever, for 10K. There were two key components. One, it was based on 80-20 running by Matt Fitzgerald. And it was based on three week cycles, two weeks hard, one week rest. And I don't think I've recreated that since. And last key point is that it's just general training. My two 10K races that I'd booked in for January and February, they've been canceled. I've got no specific race in the calendar right now until one that I have in April. So this will just be general training and hopefully I'll find a 10K to be able to plug in somewhere. So there needs to be flexibility. Let's dive into the training plan. So you go to the website t.coros.com, you log in using your details that you use to log in on your phone, and it starts by bringing up this dashboard. To start tra planning your training, okay, you click on calendar up the top here, and it'll take a moment to load, but then what you'll get is your training plan. So you will see, if you do this midweek, you'll see your activities that you've done already for the week. Okay, they're in green because I'd planned those ones and I hit those sessions and I finished those sessions. The next ones, they don't have a color assigned to them, but they are workouts that I did yesterday. Now you'll notice these three, these are the ones that are planned for over the next few days. Okay, so that's how the, the calendar works. Now you'll notice that I actually plan every single one of my runs, even my easy runs, everything, and I put metrics to it. A lot of people don't like to do that, but I do purely because this way I can spend a bit of time one day a week or one day every couple of weeks really thinking about my running, really concentrating on, oh, what am I gonna do? When am I gonna do it? Why am I gonna do it? And then I just plug it into the watch and set it and forget it. I do most of my running at 4.30 in the morning, and when I've just got out of bed, I don't wanna think about session my gun do, how far am I going to run, all of that sort of stuff. This way I can be a little bit more on autopilot. I do revisit it, but at least this way at that 4.30 in the morning moment, I can just get out the door, click run on my watch and do today's run. This is this week. You can see sort of how the structure of the week here. So I've got foundation run, which is basically just an easy run, just your everyday aerobic miles. Tuesday is my tempo run day, brief warm up into a tempo. This week was 18 minutes and then 10 minutes cool down. Wednesdays, just do another easy run. 45 minutes at an easy pace, somewhere around the five minute mark. Thursday, that's my group run, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I'm planning for next week's run. Friday, low recovery run, 45 minutes. Tomorrow, 45 minutes at an easy pace, so I'm gonna do strides afterwards as well. Sunday, I've got my long run, 17 Ks, 15 Ks of it at easy pace, and then two Ks, more threshold type pace. Let's have a look at next week. When I start with my training plan, I actually start with my long run. To add a workout to my long run, that would be on Sunday next week. Now we click on this little button here, it brings up all the workouts that you've previously created in your Coros app before. If you haven't created one before, you would go down here to create workout. Okay, so that's what I'll, I haven't created, the long run workout that I'm gonna do next week. So I'm going to hit create workouts. So we're gonna give the workout, it's a run. So I'm gonna give it a name. I've already done a lot of the thinking about what this is going to look like and based it on some of the ideas in here. In my 10K races since 2019, I've died in the second half. My last Clifton Beach effort, Cairns 10 last year. And even that good one that I did that I keep referring back to, I faded in the second half. So one of the things I'm gonna to do to address this is work on my long runs and have 
the first portion of it easy and then the last two k's are going to be a harder effort more of a threshold effort so not all out sprinting but somewhere around that 410 per k pace this week i'll be doing 15 k's at easy pace and then the two k's of tempo or threshold tacked on the end next week i'm going to increase that so i'm going to get rid of the warm-up it is just an easy start so i can warm up as i'm going along then i need to select my interval so i'm going to make this interval a distance interval so you can create any sort of interval you want it'll stop you at that certain point or you can make it open so you choose when to stop uh, i'm going to make it a distance interval and i'm going to make it 18 k's because i want to run a 20k's in total you can choose what to base the whole session off so if i click up here i can choose what to base every single aspect of the session now this is really good if you're using the one um, system so if you're training by pace you can set it to just train by pace and then it automatically populates that and it's easier to create that workout if you're doing some parts of the session by pace some parts by heart rate i would recommend having custom here now this one i'm using percentage of threshold pace i don't normally use the watchers decisions around this but they're sort of matching up at the moment to what i would do anyway so i'm, I'm just using them because it's a bit quicker and easier for me you can see all of these have changed to percentage of threshold pace so I'm going to do that one, and a, not at aerobic power, aerobic endurance, because I want to run it around that 5 minute to 5.10 uh, per K for that 18 Ks. And that'll give me pace alerts if I'm running faster than the 4.38 pace and slower than the 5.14 pace. So it's a big, generous area for me. The next part is not a rest, it is a run, so I can change that there. Already it's populated threshold pace. I'm going to make this a distance one as well and I'm going to make that two kilometers because I wanted to run a total of 20 k's percentage of threshold pace and this one I want to go a bit faster than that I want to go at around that 410 pace that threshold pace for me I won't have a cool down on this one the idea is to finish fast and then just do a bit of a walk around cool down after that so I won't put plan any sort of cool down or anything like that in there and then I just click save and that's created the workout now all I have to do is it saves it in the workout section so it's always there whenever I want to use it and then I can just drag it down to Sunday and bang it's planned. Next come the session. So because I've already got these plans the rest of this will be a lot quicker. Thursdays they're my uh, group run days. They're called teamwork. I've already got a workout planned for that one and I'll just talk you through how I'm planning for that. So I have a solo one in case I can't do the group one. That was for when I was traveling or when timetables and things didn't work out. Well, this one is my standard Thursday plan. I'll drop it in for Thursday and then I'll just show you what it looks like. We do a 7K progression run where we start out at paces around the 4.30ish per K mark, maybe a little bit slower, and then finish at sub fours in that 7k interval then we sit around and wait for everyone in the group to catch up because it does get quite spread out towards the end of that 7k interval everyone catches their breath then we do a 3k stint that is meant to be a bit of an all-out effort it's a bit of a race between everyone but i'm not going to do it that way for the duration of this training plan i'm trying to concentrate on strength so i'm not going all out speed and trying to beat everyone at that i'm going to take a step back and just do that 3k's at threshold pace so that's why I've got in here that last 3Ks is planned at my threshold pace. That'll just keep me in check. When you're creating the plan like this, say you wanted to, you didn't want to edit the workout in the workouts bank, so it did change things for future workouts, but you just want to change it for this week, so this week you don't want to do something, then you drop it into your plan and then click on it and it'll change it within the plan. If you click on it in this list it'll change it in the workouts bank so anytime you go to drag and drop that it'll change it then just keep that in mind when you're creating your workouts and changing different things my next workout is the tuesday threshold runs just a sustained interval at threshold pace at around that 410 per k pace the whole point of this plan is building speed endurance so i'm going to spend as much time within those 80 20 boundaries at that threshold pace they're labelled tempo runs because that's the way they're labelled within um, the 8020. The one that I'm looking at is tempo run three. It's 10 minutes warm up, 20 minutes at my threshold pace, 10 minutes cool down. That's how I want that workout set up. So I now just drag and drop that. So clicking on those dots, drag and drop that into Tuesday. Next, we'll fill out the rest days. They're going to be 50 minute easy and recovery runs. Same as what I've done week to week. Just to keep that consistency going and just getting those miles in the legs. 
Now, if you've got the same workout more than once, quickest and easiest way is to go copy and then just roll across and then click paste. That'll copy it into that day. Copy, and I'm gonna do the same thing on Saturday, paste it into that day. And do a recovery run on the Friday, so I'll drop recovery run six in there. Almost filled out. I'm gonna add in some strides as well. Mondays and Saturdays seem to work out well for that. I don't wanna do it on Fridays because I wanna keep that recovery nice and easy for myself. I've got a little strides workout that I have pre-programmed purely because it just keeps me accountable to it and make sure I do it if it's in the plan. So I'll drop that in on Saturday and copy and paste it across for Monday as well. That's my next week planned and that's basically how I would plan a week for this training plan. What you can see, Coros looks through all of your workouts and calculates how far things you're gonna run and how much time you're gonna spend in your activities. But basically because I've done mine by pace and because I've been running with it so much, it, it's had a bit of a calculate at how far it thinks I'm gonna go over this week. So it's saying 75 Ks. If I do get close to that mark, I'm probably gonna back it off because if we have a look at this week, currently done 31.4 Ks. And if I complete this week as planned, I'll end up with around the 60 to 65 mark, jumping from 60 to 72, way too much. So depending on how my long run goes, I may cut that back and just do a sh shorter long run on the Sunday. But yeah, I'll just, I'll make that decision next week and see how that goes. I also may just factor in another rest day. So that's how I use Coros and that's how I'm planning my training at the moment. So if you've got any questions or any comments, I'd love to hear them down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, I hope you found it useful and valuable for you. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. If you did find it useful, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. See you next time guys. Bye now.